Imagine you're taking a test in your sexual health education class, and you come across the question, what is the best way to prevent pregnancy and sexually transmitted infections? The correct answer is, don't have sex. This is true, but if someone comes to you and wants to learn how to ski without injury, do you respond, don't ski? Or do you help them learn what equipment and knowledge they need to ski safely? <laughs> we teach people who choose to ski how to ski safely. So why don't we teach people how to stay safe if they choose to have sex? Did you get the sex talk from your parents? Did you have sex when you were in school? Did you have sex education when you were in school? <laughs> Did either of these talks help you feel prepared for your actual life experiences when you became sexually active? I know mine didn't, and a majority of the people we surveyed agreed. Why does Montana's sex education sound like something from an early, two, early 2000s sitcom? An uncomfortable gym teacher pointing to vague drawings on a whiteboard saying, don't have sex or you'll get pregnant and die. In Montana, unlike other states, sex ed is not even required to be medically accurate. Again, for the people in the back, in our state, sex ed does not have to be medically accurate. Montana only has three requirements for its sex education. It must be age appropriate, it must include HIV education, and it must include abstinence education. While not all Montana sex ed is abstinence only, curriculum can vary wildly depending on what district your school is in or even down to what teacher a student gets. 47% of our survey respondents said they were taught by their gym teacher, while others discussed the teacher feeling awkward or uninterested while teaching the material, leaving some students with just the information in their textbooks. I make art about genitalia and the human form. And due to this visual vulnerability to a taboo topic, people feel comfortable coming to me with their stories. One woman shared she never learned that she needed to pee after sex and found herself hospitalized with a urinary tract infection turned kidney infection just three days, almost dying. I've since run into scores of people with similar stories and it strikes me how such a tiny piece of life-saving information goes completely unmentioned by our current sex education system. This piece of tape represents a woman who loses a little bit of her bonding power every time she has sex with someone. This piece of tape has now lost its adhesive, or bonding power, because it's been stuck to multiple people. This is a shame-based lesson currently taught in our Montana schools. Shame is a painful feeling of humiliation and distress. Intense shame over time can have lasting physical and mental impacts. Specifically, in the case of sex, people experience paralyzing fear, physical illness, and even PTSD. My education in Montana was heavily focused on scare tactics. This left me with extreme anxiety that impacted me far into my adulthood. During sex, I would experience panic attacks that would leave my whole body shaking while I gasped for air being suffocated by my own fear. It took me years to develop a healthy relationship with intimacy. And Bailey is not alone. Studies have shown that 76% of teens experience emotional and psychological abuse in relationships. 
Jenny is a 24-year-old from Bozeman. This is her story. In my teen years, I found myself in an abusive relationship. I didn't know any better, as my mother was also dating an abusive man. I never had healthy relationships modeled for me. I thought this was normal. My sex education solely focused on STI prevention and anatomy. If I had been taught about cycles of abuse and learned terms like gaslighting, maybe I would have learned what was happening to me was wrong earlier and have gotten help. Lessons on healthy relationships would help empower people like Jenny to make safe and educated decisions. Lessons on healthy relationships and communication skills are seemingly lacking across our state. Almost every person we talked to said that their curriculum was more focused on the act of sex and its potential consequences and not the relationship surrounding it. While anatomy is important, sex isn't just about penises and vaginas. And if the youth are not getting the information they need from their curriculum at school, where are they getting it? The internet, friends, social media, and porn. When I wasn't Googling or reading the sex and relationship section in Cosmo, I was talking with my girlfriends, trying to find answers to questions we had, like, will it hurt when I have sex for the first time? And Anna's not the only one who turned to Google. We found that 31% of young adults turned to the internet and porn. I know I did. My parents signed me out of sex ed, so I received no formal sex education. I was left to my own devices to answer my many burning questions. Receiving sex education solely through porn is dangerous, unrealistic, and promotes gendered and racial violence. Over half the people we spoke to said their curriculum never talked about consent. Something you rarely see in porn is consent and its nuances. Consent should be freely given, informed, specific, enthusiastic, and reversible. I didn't learn until two years ago that I can say no to sex after our clothes are off. I can even say no once sex starts. Nothing in the porn I watched or the forums I read hinted at such an autonomy of self. We, as concerned advocates for youth, believe that all young people deserve non-judgmental, medically accurate, and empowering sexual health education. Young people. <laughs> <laughs> young people need comprehensive sex education. So wait a minute. What makes sex education comprehensive? Teaching all forms of contraception, not just abstinence. HIV and LGBTQ plus lessons are also markers of comprehensive sex education programs. Though the recent passing of, Senate Bill, of Montana Senate Bill 99, which requires schools to send curriculum home to parents ahead of time, is making administrators reluctant to include lessons on sexuality and gender expression. As a queer person, this is devastating. With comprehensive sex education, individuals can make choices that are best for them based on their own values and goals. It neither shames nor promotes sex. And we get it. As parents, you don't want to give your children the green light to have sex. Research actually contradicts the idea that more sex education encourages more sex. In fact, studies conclude that comprehensive sex education programs reduces the rate of sexual activity, unintended pregnancy, STIs, dating and sexual violence, as well as actually delaying the starting age of sexual activity. A comprehensive sex education program will cover topics such as relationships, communication skills, consent, and recognizing and preventing sexual violence. It can feel daunting to take on such a complex topic, but it's absolutely necessary. 
we've seen through our research the real harm avoiding these conversations has done. Normalize talking to your kids about sexual health and let them know that you are there to help and offer support without judgment. We will dispel the shame when we normalize this topic. How will you start the conversation? Thank you.